Hello everyone. Today I have for you the SKS. SKS. Going in for a close look, the SKS I have here today is a Romanian one. Uh, these are nearly identical in construction to the Russian models, uh, and the Romanian SKSs are the most uncommon of the common models, or the most common of the uncommon models, um, the common ones being Chinese, Yugoslavian, and Russian the uncommon being Romanian and Albanian. And then you have your rare models, which are from North Korea, Vietnam, and East Germany. All these variations make the SKS very collectible. Some people like to try to get one from each country, and each country even has its own variations. Just like to point out that the safety on these guys is a simple mechanical block of the trigger. Uh, you see right there, it just blocks the trigger from moving rearward. It doesn't block the hammer, the sear, or anything like that. Well, the trigger, this one's been worked on. There's just a little bit of take up and then a crisp four and a half pound break. Your sights are pretty much AK sights. Not much difference from that. Standard iron sights. The sling I have on the rifle is an AK sling. I do have a Romanian SKS sling, and these slings are actually harder to find than the rifles. Um, so let me give you a quick look at it. It's all leather. So marking there. So I had the SKS sling on this rifle, but the problem is, being all leather, it attaches to the gas block here, and uh, while shooting it just gets scorched. So I don't know how well this actually worked for the military, so that's why I changed it to the AK sling, because there's metal that clips onto the metal. The ammo this rifle shoots is 762 by 39 same as an AK-47. Treating this old girl to some brass case ammo from Norma. Most 7.62x39 in the world is steel cased. I want to show you a little trick for loading from a clip. Um, see, a lot of people have trouble with the rounds kind of binding up and you got to push them in a little bit at a time. Usually when that happens, it's because you're actually pressing the cartridges back into the clip, which uh, increases the resistance. So. The reason that'll happen is like if you press like this, well, your your front finger here, when you're pressing down, you're also applying some rearward force, and that'll make the rounds bind up here in the curve of the clip. So you have to make sure you only press down at the rear position. And one thing you can do to help press down is to uh, pick up the nose of the front cartridge and then press down with your thumb at the back. And this uses your top cartridge like a tool to help push all the rounds down. So is it worth it today to pick up an SKS? Well, that depends. If you're like me, there's just something about it, the integrated bayonet, the overall construction, that makes it just cool. If you want it for that, historical or collectible value, then yes, it's still worth it. But if you're more tactical minded, you want to make this into something like an AK, I would not suggest you do that. Um, you know, what you'll see people do is uh, change out the magazine for detachable uh, like duck build type mags. They're, they're really not as reliable ever. And they're awkward. They're clunky because uh, in order to fit into this magazine well, you have what they call a duckbill projection. 
so they look really strange, but uh, my advice would be don't bubba your SKS, just love it for what it is. However, in the tactical analysis, if you live like in a banned state, uh, you know, this is relatively not a scary rifle and it's not going to be banned in as many places. And just as a story, I was at a class one day and um, one guy was there, he, he had lived in a banned state and he had come in with his SKS. And uh, you know, most people bring ARs, but uh, this is what he could have. And he did all the drills, he used the iron sights, and um, he got really good at reloading this thing with clips. And uh, although it is outdated compared to modern rifles, you can get the job done with an SKS if you have to. Prices on your SKSs today range from about $400 for a common Chinese variant to maybe as high as $4,000 for a rare variant. Um, but most of the time you're going to pay between four and seven hundred dollars for most of them. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching.